Uh, all you need to remember is that uh, the central bankers and politicians, they hate falling prices and they're going to do their darndest to, to keep prices rising. Uh, but uh, what they'll do is they'll make sure it doesn't rise too quickly because if it does, people wake up <laughs> and realize it's a scam. Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Well, we're going to look at a, a topic today that uh, I've covered before, and, and that's the UK uh, inflation data, if you want to call it inflation. Uh, technically, they're the, the price data that uh, show how much prices are rising. And uh, generally, CPI is the official measure of prices. It's called uh, the inflation data by many. Uh, I, I personally don't think it is. Well, it isn't because inflation is a, a term that should be linked to the inflation of the currency. When you, in, when you increase the currency supply and, and the money in circulation, you've got inflation. And that usually uh, leads to a, a rise in the general price level. And I understand that... Uh, the rich actually don't get hurt by uh, rising prices as much as the, the people at the bottom, as the working class or the general public. And why is that? Well, because their income is a lot bigger and uh, usually uh, the general necessities of life like shelter, food, energy and transport really, uh, really get, get hit hard in terms of purchasing power, your cost of living goes up. And that's why uh, the, the people at the bottom get get hit really harder from rising prices, uh, which of course is the consequence of all the money and currency creation. And I remember well uh, back in the 70s and 80s uh, growing up in Brazil that, uh, yeah, the, the people at the bottom, the general public, was always complaining about inflation a lot more than the people who who were well off. Well, and why? Well, because they had to uh, take uh, public transport to go to work. They had to buy food. Uh, they had to uh, pay the rent. They had to pay for energy, uh, for, for utilities. And that took up most of their wages. And it's the same thing. The same thing is happening here in the UK and in the US and in the rest of Western Europe. And I, I would venture to say it's one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, social unrest. And I'm not going to go deeper into the social unrest and the ins and out, outs of it. So did you know that uh, RPI, which is the Retail Price Index, that was used as the official inflation rate up until around 2003. Uh, the CPI didn't exist up until the, the 90s. The UK adopted the CPI in the late 90s when uh, the new Labour government came, came to power. And then in 2003, they started using the CPI as the measure. But if you look at the data today, and you're going to see headlines like from the FT that uh, UK inflation rises less than expected to 2.2% in July. Well, that is the CPI, uh, the Consumer Price Index. Uh, but the RPI, uh, if you look at the, the data and you can find it on investing.com, it's still published. It says here the RPI uh, in June rose at 2.9% on an annualized basis. It was expected to, to rise to 34 but it rose to 36 and that is very significant. That's an increase of uh, 25% on the annual uh, rates from month to month. It's not a 25% increase, but it's a, it's a big increase. You won't see a headline in, in the mainstream media saying RPI jumps massively. No, you would just see that uh, CPI uh, is still like 2.2 and inflation is not a problem. 
So let's look at the difference between RPI and CPI. Um, and one that I, I, I find really interesting is from this article here uh, back in, uh, when was this written? Well, 19th of June, 2024. So it's very recent. And, and it's in the uh, Money Week magazine, RPI versus CPI, inflation. <laughs> uh, what's the difference between the ONS measures? Well, ONS is the uh, Government uh, Statistics Office. Uh, I found this interesting. What is RPI inflation? The RPI is another index used to measure rises and falls in the cost of goods and services over time. As of May, its annual rate was 3%, 0.3 percentage points lower than it was in the previous month. It tends to track higher than the CPI because it includes costs associated with home ownership. RPI was the original original official consumer price uh, inflation measure. It was first implemented in 1956 and was the only measure of its kind for the health of the UK economy. This is really interesting here uh, as well because it's still used uh, by the government. Where it does still have re relevance is when it comes to setting cost increases for some bills and services. For example, it is used by some broad broadband firms to set April bill hikes. And it, it is also used by the government to set annual rail ticket price increases. Here are some of the other things RPI sets or influences. It's interesting that the RPI uh, is used to set the, the, the prices for rail, uh, rail transport. And rail transport is a huge part, especially uh, here in the UK, uh, of people going to work, commuting. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that you, you see clips on, on social media about how expensive it is to travel by train in the UK compared to other countries. Maybe it's because of that, because uh, they're setting uh, the prices via the true measure of, let's say, inflation, if you want to call it. But here are some other things that are set by, by RPI. Well, tobacco duty, air passenger duty, road tax, alcohol duty, final salary pensions payments, interest in student loans, income from index link annuities. So you can see how important it is and uh, how it affects people at the lower end a lot more. And Investopedia also talks about the difference between the two. Uh, and uh, it says here, using the RPI, although the RPI is not an uh, official statistic, it's used to determine cost of living and wage escalation, tax allowances on index linked securities, social housing rent increases. So there you go. You've got the transport and the social housing. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here, the RPI is a, a, a lot better measure of what the average working class British taxpayer is feeling in terms of inflation. And yet uh, they come out and, and tell you that inflation is under control, that CPI is near the target of 2%. Again, why have a target of uh, debasing the currency by 2%? And I know the rate has been uh, tinkered with, and I spoke about that, uh, well, about two years ago, uh, back in May of 2022, just over two years ago, the ONS uh, changed significantly the way it calculates CPI, and the CPI looks even lower now than it used to be. And it's even lower, of course, than the RPI. You can watch that video here. Up, I've put it up in the cards about this change in CPI. And I know that uh, not, not two families probably have the same 
kind of uh, basket of goods and services that it buys. But generally speaking, the people at the lower end, the, the bulk of the population, uh, especially outside London, they're feeling the RPI increase, not the CPI. Uh, the very wealthy, of course, they don't care if uh, prices rise by 3 or 5%. They can always afford it. They have a lot of assets. And um, yeah, they, they've got a lot of inc extra income coming in. And it's not a problem for them. And I think uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, people are starting to get upset about things in general. And uh, of course, they're blaming a lot of things, and I'm not going to go into it here. You you probably know what I mean. Uh, recently, what's happening in the UK, but I, I would say the underlying cause is uh, inflation, and as we know, inflation is something that can only be uh, created by government and the central bank, uh, and by inflation, of course, I mean increasing the amount of uh, currency out there. Yes, uh, the private banks that are under the central banks, they also create currency. But if the central bank and the government uh, keep uh, monetary and fiscal policy very accommodative, uh, that will be reflected in more loans. More loans means uh, more currency out there. And uh, as... Uh, Richard Cantillon said back in the, uh, yeah, I think it was the uh, 17th century, that currency flows to the people at the top first. By the time it gets to someone in uh, Birmingham or Liverpool or wherever, or even in London, somewhere at the bottom uh, of the economic ladder, it's worth a lot less. Let's quickly look at... Uh, where the markets are this morning. Uh, before we uh, sign off, it's 8.30 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 24.69. Uh, so we're up about five bucks. We're only about $14 off the all-time high in the spot price. So I, I think what gold is saying here to us, because it's up like about 20% year to date uh, against all major currencies, the British pound included. It's saying that uh, we're going to see a lot higher prices in the next 12 to 18 months. That's what happened in uh, 2020, 2021, when gold uh, rose from like 1450 to 2000. We saw in 21, 22, uh, prices go up, CPI go double digits in the UK. I think this is what uh, gold is uh, telegraphing us. Uh, the high today has been 73 and the low 55. Uh, silver is at 27.90. It's up six cents. The high has been 28.02 and the low has been 27.53. Uh, one thing about silver here in the UK, one of you uh, pointed out to me that uh, a particular bullion dealer is actually paying 8% over spot to, to buy your one ounce silver Britannias, all your one ounce silver coins. And, and I find that interesting uh, because uh, silver is still, uh, it has been doing relatively well this year, but it's been under pressure for the last few weeks or month. And yet, uh, bullion dealers uh, are, are paying you uh, almost 10% to buy it off you. That, that tells me that uh, there's kind of a shorted out, out, out there and that uh, there's a lot of demand and the bullion dealers need you to bring in your silver. Am I saying you should do that? No, <laughs> it, it, it's time to be buying uh, silver, not selling it in my opinion. Silver is gonna do a lot better. So I, I, I think that's a signal there that um, there's a, a lot of uh, pressure bubbling up beneath the silver price, and we could see it uh, go up quite a bit so very soon. What about the rest of the markets? Well, I see a lot of people saying that uh, we're not out of the woods, 
that all we're getting right now is a rebound and that we could see the markets keel over going into October. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, right now, uh, the Dow futures is up 38. NASDAQ and S&P are virtually unchanged. Uh, we saw yesterday uh, the dollar uh, drop quite a bit versus the major, uh, let's say, dollar index currencies. Uh, I think the pound was up like uh, almost 1%. Uh, the euro is up half a percent. Today, things have turned around a little bit. Pound is down down slightly. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And of course, today we're going to get a, a little uh, later at uh, 8.30 Eastern time. We're going to get the, the U.S. inflation or CPI data. That will be an important number as well. But uh, in the scheme of things, in the scheme of currency debasement, it's just noise. Uh, all you need to remember is that uh, the central bankers and politicians, they hate falling prices. And they're going to do their darndest uh, to keep prices rising. Uh, but uh, what they'll do is they'll make sure it doesn't rise too quickly. Because if it does, people wake up <laughs> and realize it's a scam. So there you go. Uh, with that, I I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.